Architecture has always been a creative and complex field that requires a perfect balance between aesthetic and functionality. In recent years, the integration of artificial intelligence and architectural design has brought a new era of innovation and efficiency. Full disclosure, I asked AI to write that introduction paragraph for me. But truly, AI is transforming how we approach so many different things, uh, especially in the AEC industry. In this video, we're gonna talk about what's the best tool for architects to use when it comes to AI. And we're gonna look at Midjourney, and we're gonna look at Evolve Labs AI Revit plugin, Virus. Let's take a look. If you're watching this video, then you probably already know that AI has become the buzz in architectural design and in the AEC industry as a whole. Many people think this is just the beginning, right? How are we going to use AI uh, going forward? How are we going to add this to our tool belt as a tool which will assist us in our design on our projects? Many people are using tools such as Midjourney and ChatGPT already, but what's gonna be next? And how are architects using these tools right now? One thing that we hear a lot is that architects are using it for ideation and inspiration. You know, you ask AI, you ask Midjourney to uh, create a rendering for you of a certain type of building or a certain type of facade, and it might inform your design as you start those preliminary stages of your project. So I'll open Midjourney, um, and you can see that as I prepared for this video, I did some test images, just feeding it uh, various text prompts, and it's really a lot of fun to use. And it's a great way just to ideate and to get that creativity flowing a little bit. Here's an image that Midjourney gave me that is more of a technical drawing, so who knows what the future holds uh, for that. But as I flip through some of these, you can see the results with some quick prompts that I entered in. Some of these I actually asked uh, ChatGPT to create the prompts for me, which was interesting um, and provided some different results. This is one of those where uh, I, I asked for a, a colorful community center and this is what it gave me. Um, it's kind of cool. Here's more of an organic parametric building in a downtown bustling setting. Here's an example of an interior of a supermarket um, so you can get some interior shots, uh, but it's all based off of the text prompts. And so you're kind of at the mercy of the AI engine. You don't have any real context as far as what your actual design might be. This one was more of a parametric facade, which I thought was cool. And as you can see down here, the text prompt that I used for this image was an architectural perspective of a modern water treatment plant building with undulating parametric wood facade and backlit with green lights. So obviously Midjourney is a powerful tool for ideation and creativity, but one of the main limitations for architects using this tool and tools like it is the lack of context. You know, Midjourney will create beautiful images, but they will not be in the context of your actual site plan or use the actual geometric shape of the building that you're designing. Uh, you know, the time you've spent in Revit already to create space programming or feasibility studies or uh, code studies, they won't be taken into account because Midjourney does not integrate into your actual Revit model. So this is where we think Verus has the advantage when it comes to AI in the architectural field. Verus is a plugin that lives directly inside of Revit. What that means is you can start your Revit model. You can set it up with all your programming, all your studies, your geometry, get your basic shape of the building down, and then you can stay in Revit for your AI rendering ideation. So let's jump into Revit and let's take a look at the tool. All right, I have opened the basic sample project in Revit, which we are all so familiar with. First thing I wanna do is jump to a plan view. I'm gonna set up some 3D views uh, for this example. So if I go to view, 3D view, and set up some camera views, um, I'll just do one right there. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we have a nice shot of the exterior of our building and let's, change a few basic settings really quick. I'm going to change it to realistic and come in here to graphic display options. Looks good. We got that view looking how we want it. And so now I'm going to start, I'm going to go to our Evolve Lab tab and open Verus. Okay, Verus is open and you can see that Verus is using our actual Revit view and it's going to create an AI rendering from this view. When we use Verus for our AI renderings, it's almost like we're creating a recipe. 
We start with our base, which is our building information model. Then we have some different options. Is it interior? Do we want to turbo nature, which will add more vegetation to the view? Do we want the view to be atmospheric? We can tell it if it's an aerial view. And then we give it some prompt words, just like in mid journey, we give it some text prompts. So in this example, sunset, contemporary and curtain wall. And we can put parentheses around those prompts to give more emphasis to that specific prompt. On our user interface, we have our creativity strength. This is the amount that the image will be replaced by the algorithm. Low values almost do nothing to change the image. High values will change it quite a bit. Uh, we have our style strength. So this is the amount the algorithm will respect your text prompt. This is the uh, width of the image. So I'm going to change that, slide that up so we get a wider uh, width on that one. And then we can change how many renderings up from one to four. Uh, how many renderings do we want to run at a time? And that'll give you different options within the same render. So right now I'm just going to keep that at one. These are some other options we can set. Is this an interior view? It's not in this case. Um, do we want a turbo nature? Do we want to make it an atmospheric rendering? And is it an aerial view? Um, we're going to leave those all off for now. And I'm just going to hit render and see what we get. All right, so even without any text prompts, um, leaving these settings just how they are, Veris created an AI rendering. Um, it gave it some context. It put it out in a grassy field. We've got trees. Um, it took its best shot at, you know, a facade here. But let's see what happens when we start to give it some text prompts. So I'll ask it to show me a glass and concrete house in a forest during autumn with a creek and a river. And that one looks really good. I think I'll render one more of those. Really like those results. Now I'm going to try to get rid of the water. So I'm going to remove the creek and river and render that one again. I like how these are looking. I'm going to go ahead and render another one of those. And this time I have atmospheric turned on. We'll see how that affects the image. All right, now you can see it's kind of a foggy image. We turn on the atmosphere. I'm going to toggle on turbo nature. Here are several other images that I got from Varus, giving it uh, various user prompts and settings all from this plugin that is directly within Revit, which is a huge advantage because most of us are working in Revit anyway, and it just streamlines everything and makes it that much faster to get great results. So this is a lot of fun and very addictive, and you can run through a lot of different options in a short amount of time. Let's see how Veris does when we're using it for interior design. So I'm gonna jump down here to level one and just create a new interior view using the camera, something like that. All right, so here's our interior view. Once again, I'm gonna come through and set up some of these basic settings uh, within Revit. All right, now this time we're going to turn on is interior and we'll just render a couple quick ones without changing any of the settings or adding any text prompts first. Those look really cool. And now I'm going to actually give it some text prompts. So I'm going to type up living room, white walls, white ceiling, gray wood floor, forest outside seen through larger glass windows. And once again, here are a few different uh, images that we got from Virus using those same prompts and those same settings. And then I switch the floor to concrete and put in a prompt for a black leather sofa and got these images. Okay, and now I'm going to turn on the toggle for is aerial view and atmospheric. And for this prompt, I'm just going to type log cabin in the woods. And here are the results we got using that prompt. And then we change the prompt to say beach house on the coast. 
and we get some really great results from that too. And as a final example in this video, let's set up an evening shot using the prompt minimal facade design, sunset, dramatic sky, interior lights are on. And here are some of the results that we got, which I thought turned out really great. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope it was informational. I hope it was helpful. We're going to be taking some deeper dives into various and some different workflows. Stay tuned for those videos. In the meantime, if you'd like some more information about the product, check out our website, evolvelab.io. Thanks. Have a great day.